today we're going to look into how to cook 360. This is a trick that's so much fun, but it's a little tricky. I've known it for at least the last 10 years, on and off. It's like the opposite of learning a bike. You, you learn it, but you really got to keep it alive because it takes a lot of feeling to really get it right. Um, so I'm going to relearn it today and share with you my thoughts on how you can get started doing it in a safe way. Before you even considering trying to do a proper cork 3, make sure that you know how to do a good carved 3 with a slight wobble. Right in, carve, have a nice angle between upper body and legs. At the end of the jump, you pop, then you lose this angle, but still tilt it into the turn slightly. Keep your eyes up, then pull up your legs quickly and reach down your hands. You make yourself small. This is going to help you to uncork this gentle wobble. Practice this a lot and have people film you so you see what's happening. It's also great if you know how to do a 540 because it's easy to over-rotate a cork 3. It's good that you're prepared. Practicing your cork 3s onto an airbag, great idea, but onto a trampoline, ah, not such an awesome idea because it's quite different from a jump that tilts you back and a car that tilts you into the turn. So I recommend you practice this on skis. My favorite kind of jump for doing cork threes are like pretty steep and short, a bit like this. So I think this jump down there is pretty cool. So while you set up the stabilizer, I go and try it. Since it's not like riding a bike, my first attempt wasn't great. Now the cork three went to a cork five. Frustrating. Because, you know, first try, no, second try was good. Third try, weird head thing. Worse, better, worse. Ah. Now we're gonna nail it. One more. Yeah, in the end, I did get my Cork 360 back that I haven't got down since last season. <laughs> this day was so much fun because we were four people sessioning the jump, feeling the struggle of Cork 360s, but also the rewards. Have yourself filmed so oh. you can see what you're doing right or wrong. I also asked my friend Lucas for advice on my Cork, and I think he really nailed some good advice on Cork 360s. Here's what he said. Jens is doing so, some cork threes, and he's doing it really technical and mm -hmm. really well. But there's one little mistake that he's doing in What's his video. Mistake, man? I wouldn't actually call it a mistake. You what know, you cork three is a very personal thing. It looks yeah. so simple, and at the it same time, it's so it's so difficult. You know, so I always say it's a trick that you set with your core. Oh, I know. Yeah. That's it's true. easier if you carve in. And the best way is yours, that you carve in just a little bit and you ski like a good skier. You need to be a good skier for that. You know, you know the word angulation, if you want to be technical coaches? Uh, they don't know, but that means when the body tilts like that. If we'll you see a racer, screen. if you see a racer, yeah. okay, give me, give me, you're a gate, okay, I'm, I'm a, a racer. Gate. Racer is not going like this into the gate, he's going like this. Yeah. This angle is called angulation, right? Yeah, yeah. So you want to angulate a tiny bit. So that means you want to ski good with your head up. So when you start your cork, you are angling a tiny bit, you ski with your head up. The only thing that I find on your video that is a bit correctable, because your corks are nice, is keep your head up when, you, when you're setting the cork. Keep it up. Set it and first then go cork. Don't rush it. I will try 99 people, 99% of people, Rush a bit, they put the head down. You want to do a cork with your body, not just with your hand. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. I will try that right now. Thanks for the feedback, man. I want to do it with my kids now, like you are doing it. Come and join me. I agree with Lucas here that there's no right and wrong. Let's look at this guy. He absorbs the jump, almost touches the lip. Makes a sick cork three. Nothing wrong with that. This guy is leaning almost towards seven o'clock which means it takes a little bit longer to uncork it. was so sick, nothing's wrong with that. But when I lean towards like seven o'clock, I tend to need more rotation in order to complete the full cork. So what I suggest to you here is that if you would set it towards six o'clock or maybe even five, you would have a much quicker cork and uncork motion, even if that one didn't go so well. That's a technique many use on a dub seven. So what me and Lucas are saying is that there are more than one correct way of doing it as long as it looks dope. But if it doesn't work for you, it's clearly wrong and you should maybe try some of the techniques we suggest here. Carve in, have a bit of angulation, tip into the side a little bit, keep your eyes up. 
Set the cork with the core and tip gently back. Make yourself really small in the air. It's gonna help you cork and uncork faster as well. Something that helps me to think about this is think about pop and you want to have the feet in front of you like you would jump into a wall. I hope you enjoyed learning a thing or two about this legendary trick that can be so easy and awesome and so difficult and awesome or not awesome, an awesome, an awesome. Uh, if you mess it up because you know it is tricky, balancey and uh, the key takeaway, you know, be patient, start with little cork and slightly increase it, don't overdo it. Oh yeah, uh, if you nail this, we have another smart wool giveaway, we're going to give away some sweet merino gear. So post a video of yourself trying this with the hashtag I stomped it and follow smart wool Europe. Check out this sweet cork 3 here and the next one, mmm, yeah that's the stuff. Check out our online course for beginners in case you don't know what we are all about or how to do shit. See you next time.